Hello, I'm Stephanie Guidon taking ESP 309 for the spring 2016 semester with Dr. Pagan. Um, I'm speaking to you from a conference room in Mitchell Hall in Westchester, Pennsylvania, in the United States. Um, today I'm going to be discussing my oral essay, which is titled How Latin America Conveys Their Push for Justice Through Modern Film. Um, the keywords to pay attention to in that title are the push for justice. These keywords are relevant because both of these films illustrate Latin American minorities fighting back against their government to make a change in their own lives. Um, I selected this title because I feel like most of our class this semester has been centered around these ideas. Um, the topics I'd like to focus on are changing identities and human rights. The two movies I'll be talking about that demonstrate these two very important concepts today are Captive, directed by Gaston Beerben in Argentina in 2003, and Even the Rain, directed by ECR Bolain in Bolivia, Spain in 2010. The reason I chose the topics Changing Identities and Human Rights um, is because these two movies showcase these concepts perfectly. Uh, these two films connect the topics by giving real-life examples of how these Latin American countries have been oppressed by their government and demonstrate how the Latin American people fight back to have their voices heard. Um, it's important to recognize the struggles of these people, and it's remarkable to see how motivated they are to make a difference for, for them and their families. Uh, my thesis statement is these films use historical events to exhibit how people in power use their authority to oppress the, min the minorities of Latin America. These two films directly show Latin American minorities retaliating against their authoritative figures. The first film I'm going to, discuss, to discuss is Captive. Um, the scene I've chosen to analyze is the flashing of scenes when Christina is beginning to accept her new life as Sofia. Um, I've titled the scene The Transformation. I feel that this scene truly embodies um, the idea of changing identities. The scene includes um, multiple film elements that give a lifelike feel to the film and really help us understand how these minorities have moved on from the struggles. Uh, this is the scene where we see the flashing of different scenes as Christina goes through the transformation of becoming Sophia. Um, the scene begins as Christina walks in as her grandmother is playing the piano, but she kind of just stands in the back and just observes. And then the, the film then flashes through scenes of the process of how Christina begins to accept what has happened to her and uh, she's starting to see herself as Sophia. And the scene ends with Sophia sitting with her grandmother, playing the piano with her. And uh, you can really see the happiness in her face and how she's finally accepted who she really is. Um, for the film scene elements, I'm going to start by talking about the visual elements of the scene. Uh, the scene starts out very dark and cool and transitions into warmer and lighter colors at the end to demonstrate how Christina was hurt and upset when she found out um, that she was one of the children of the disappeared, but is happy and relieved when she comes to terms with her new life. The scene uses close-up shots when the director is really trying to show the emotion of the characters so the viewer feels it too. And Biraban uses panoramic shots when he's trying to emphasize Christina, uh, really trying to put emphasis on that transition of Christina moving into Sophia. Um, the rhythm of the scene is quick and choppy and the quickness and choppiness is created by Beerben flashing through different parts of the film where Christina is discovering her real identity. Uh, there's parts where Christina is walking through the town square, um, observing the grandmother's marching, where her and her friend are doing research, trying to figure out what really happened to the disappeared people. And there's um, scenes of her enjoying her new life with her new family. Um, those are some of the different scenes that are flashed through. Um, the discourse in this scene is silent with slow music playing in the background. The reason the director chose uh, the silence is so the spectators really focus on the images as this is really like the climax or the turning point of the film. And the silence with the slow music creates a strong impact on the viewer and allows them to really get in touch with the same emotions that Christina is feeling. Um, lastly, empathy is a strong film element in this scene. Biraben generates sympathy for Christina as we see the struggles she had to face as she discovered she was one of the children of the disappeared parents. Um, as spectators, we sympathize with Christina through her journey of discovering her new identity. Um, the reading that I'd like to talk about is The Little School, Tales of Disappearance and Survival in Argentina by Alicia Partnoy. In this reading, the author is talking about her experience of being captured and being taken to a concentration camp in Argentina. 
The quote I'm using is on is from page 10, the third paragraph down. It's when they're talking about at the little school, how in the kitchen they were asking her to make a list of her belongings, and she says, what for if you're going to steal them all? And this relates to Christina and Captive when she finds out her parents are not her biological parents. Um, she is taken into custody of the government and essentially feels like she has nothing. Um, Uh, like the woman in, like the woman in the reading does as well. The woman in the reading and Christina share similar struggles. Both of these women were taken from surroundings that they're used to, and they were both dealing with some type of identity crisis at the time and were both left to figure out how to navigate through their new lives. Uh, the second film I'm going to talk about is Even the Rain. Oppression of Water is uh, what I've titled the scene I'm going to analyze. This scene really exemplifies basic human rights and how they were taken away from the Bolivian people. Uh, this, scene, this is the scene where the Bolivian government comes in to change the padlocks on the village wells. We see the Bolivian mothers in the village um, approach the government officials and they're enraged that they're taking control of these wells that these women built by hand for their own children. The scene incorporates many of the film scene elements that help bring so much passion and raw emotion to the viewers. Uh, the discourse in this scene is very important. All that's heard is the Bolivian women shouting uh, with no background music. And you can hear the passion in their voices as they're shouting things like, are you going to take the air too? And this water is for our children, for our families. And you really get a sense that these women will go to any lengths to protect their families. Uh, the sound really helps heighten the scene as well. It starts out as silent, and as more women join the riot, the shouting intensifies and the background music intensifies. Um, this has the impact of escalating the scene and showing the viewer like just how important these basic rights are to these Bolivian families. Uh, the scene also encompasses empathy perfectly. As spectators of the film, we sympathize with these Bolivian mothers as they advocate for their families and for a basic human right, which is water. Um, this scene puts you right in the middle of the action and really allows the viewers to feel the struggle that these women are facing. And lastly, the scene has a very non-fiction, lifelike feel. Uh, you feel as if you're right in the village with them it's experiencing this riot firsthand. The authenticity of the scene really helps the viewers appreciate the, the, the dedication of these Bolivian women. Uh, the reading I'll be taking a quote from is Vandana Shiva's Principles of Earth Democracy. Uh, the quote is on page 3, the beginning of paragraph 2, where Shiva says, The privatization of public goods and services and the commoditization of the life support systems of the poor is a double theft which robs people of both economic and cultural security. I think this quote relates perfectly to the scene. Uh, charging people for something that is needed to sustain life is unjust and doesn't allow lower class citizens to prosper or survive for that matter in their own communities. This quote is a great demonstration of what the film is really about and really summarizes how the government is oppressing the people of Bolivia. Uh, in conclusion, the directors of both of these films wanted to showcase the struggles of Latin America, the showcase the struggles Latin American people face every day. Uh, these films use historical events to illustrate uh, the conflict these people had to face. They both wanted to spread the message that government oppression of these Latin American countries is unjust. These goals were uh, brought to life in both films, but carried out in different manners. Uh, Captive uses one girl, one specific family, one specific case to display how the government abuses their power to oppress lower class citizens. We see how the oppression, um, the government withholding information about people's identities directly affected one girl's life. Adversely, in Even the Rain, we see um, the outrage of the whole community and their struggle as a group, as the Bolivian people, uh, while exposing the corrupt manner in which their government deprives them of basic human rights. I think each film's strategies for conveying their messages were both effective, but just in different ways. It was refreshing to be able to see the same idea executed in two different manners. It allows the viewers to see these vital issues from different perspectives and helps them to really understand uh, the messages that these directors were trying to convey. These concepts presented in the films are still very relevant today. There are still grandmothers that are marching every week in hopes of um, rediscovering their lost grandchildren. And these films give insight into what is happening around our world and helps viewers realize how uneducated they were about uh, the cruel conditions that people are still living in and struggling in today.